Okay, so these PCBs that Will Cogley designed for the eye mechanism, they've arrived and here they are. And they look pretty cool, don't they? I ordered the new version of it that Will said was untested, so hopefully this is useful to him because he knows this will work, assuming it works. Now actually this video is probably just going to be a fast forward uh, on a different video, but I decided, hey, let's build this because it might be interesting for some of you to watch. And uh, the interesting bit about this is, is this is surface mount, but the bits are huge. So it should be quite an easy surface mount to try. Um, so let's get all the parts uh, ready and get this board made up. So these are all the parts that I ordered from LCSC and you can watch the order process and how easy it was to order it in this video here. These are designed to be opened by robots, which is why SpiderMath is having a little bit of difficulty doing it. Definitely easier with a knife. All right, so this should be straightforward. This is where um, I realize I've got completely the wrong parts, but now they seem all right. That's going to be the most complex thing to solder. Then I've got uh, that should just, whoops, that should fit in there without an issue. Yeah, that's good. This one should go there. Lovely. The diode can go up there. That shouldn't be a problem. And then the, this is the 680. So the 680 goes there and this is the 220, I think. Yeah, the 220 will go there. So it should be quite a nice, good looking board when it's all put together. Now, I'm not gonna solder the Arduino directly on here, but let's just check one to see whether that fits and it goes in there fine, but I'm gonna use the, uh, uh, oops, that's in the wrong one. It needs to go down a little bit, but it's fine. Um, so let's take these um, sockets and I'm gonna put those in there to solder them. They're a bit too long though, these ones, so there's not enough, well, there's too many holes. So let's cut those down. I can try and do it two ways. So I've, I've marked uh, the pin. This pin will be destroyed when I do it. So I mark the bit where I want to cut. I don't normally try cutting it this way. I just want to see whether this is possible because I want it to be, I want it actually to have a neat edge on it. So whether that will be enough. Yeah. So I normally saw through those, but that's worked okay. Look at this, I'm actually using a cutting mat for cutting on. Always a bonus on any YouTube video. Let's do the same thing with this one. And you can normally snap these with your fingers, but uh, I always want to get a neat cut, especially if you're putting it next to, directly next to another socket, then you want them to be neat. I think that will do. I want to get some eye help. So this one should now go in there without issue that's lovely and likewise for that one so if i get an arduino now and just use this for a if i use that for a to hold them into place then they will go in there fine so that i can uh, do them now normally the order when you solder these is you do the surface mount first i think i'm going to do the same thing but anyway, that's prepared the Arduino parts. Um, now I've got these, I've got some headers here that are all different colors. And I think because it's tradition that servos have different colors on, I'm gonna do that specifically to highlight the ground and the power. And then I'll use the green for the PWM. 
So this is five volts, the green will be PWM and the ground will be, not surprisingly, black. So I just need to take one off the end of here. Now these I normally always snap with my fingers, but I want to reuse this one black pin. So to save breaking it, let's try and just cut through it again. Lovely, okay. So now we should be able to do ground in there. Five volt next to it and PWM. And I think maybe, have I got three on there? Oh, I've only got two. Maybe what I can do is use them like this. Maybe even put another one on them and that keeps those all at the right um, angle when they're going in as if it's as if it's one component so yeah that's a good thing to do with that um, and this one down the bottom so what I thought I'd do with this one I've got that single black one which has now jumped off and gone into hyperspace oh, there it is okay so for the single black one I'm gonna do on this controller port at the bottom I'm gonna have one for ground and then the others, um, I'll use a different colour. So I mean, that actually there's five volts on the end. So I think I'll do one, one red pin, one black pin, and then the middle ones I'll do in green as well. So how many middle ones do I need? I need four. So yeah, I should be able to, actually I need to cut these again because they're going next to each other. One, two, three, four. All right, then I will use a spare one of these and go red, then the greens, then the other black, and that'll keep them in line and that's what I'll solder in there to keep those all together. And so when I put the uh, hand controller, plug the hand controller into that, I've got an indicator of which is the power and which are the data lines. Lovely, right, so I've put off soldering as long as I possibly can. So I think I'm gonna start with this one. And because these are so incredibly big, I'm just going to solder the one end leg down to begin with. So let's get that sorted. So this is definitely gonna be the way to do this. So this is definitely going to be the way to do this. So let's get him there. I'm just going to put a little blob of solder on the um, first leg and a little blob there. Then make sure it's all lined up. But as well as watching these pins, I want to watch the edge here. So this other side, so that I can get in there if I need to as well, which of course I will do. So the danger is you do it like that and then that's going over another part of the board. So I'll bring that forward and I should just be able to touch that on there and do it again. All right, so that looks reasonable. So now I've locked that in, so I'm looking down between, I'm just looking down between these uh, and you're getting a bit few weird reflections on the camera, but um, they are all perfectly aligned above those. Um, so I will now do this end bit and I'm gonna put a little bit of flux on this now. So, teeny little bit of flux. I should really be holding this board down in a better way than I am. And, oh. I'm just turning, uh, turning my fan on a little bit. And that should now, that should solder quite well, I hope. Oh, 
There is quite a bit of a ground plane on this, so this is taking a while to catch, but there you go. And hopefully I haven't ruined my board underneath. So now I can do the same things here and pop some. So now I can do the same things here, pop some flux over there. I've really got to get a better way of putting flux on. And then this should flow on really lovely now. Okay, I think that's... Uh, just a little join there. That came out easily because of the flux. And that's gone in beautifully. All right, so you normally should do from the smallest ones up, but on this occasion I did the most complex one first. So where's my little diode gone? Um, now this diode is interesting because which way has it, whoops, which way has it got to go on there? Hmm. So on the board, there's not. an obvious orientation so I could assume that this top bit here has been knocked off and that's the uh, minus bit but I'm not sure so I'm gonna leave this I think I'm gonna check so in that position there you see the top bit has got the negative bar on it but yeah I'll need to look at that in a minute let's go and do one of the other ones because I'll still have room to do all that over there. So the next biggest thing is this. Uh, next biggest thing is this. So I don't think... So the next biggest thing is this. I don't think I have to worry about orientation on that. There's just two sides. So let's just put the soldering iron down for a little bit and I'm going to put a little bit of flux there put it there I'm probably going to end up doing all of these so I'll just put a little flux on that and that should stick it down a little bit as well all right so I think I'm going to come in from that side and yeah, well, let's see. Let's see how it goes. Um, I'm not sure how well you're going to see this. I'm probably going to knock it out of the position, but uh, I can always reposition this one. So in we go. that's held that in and I've got enough room to do the same over the other side so I've still got the flux on there um, in I go on that side lovely so we next go to the 680 capacitor so and that's the 681 and he goes here now the base has got the orientation on it and that's come through so I think I'm going to do the easiest one to get to to begin with and then maybe turn it around a little bit so let's just hold it on with that You have to be careful with these because if you put the heat on for too long they can pop 
but all right, so there's room to get in. That's gone on okay. I'm sorry if you missed that. So there's room to get in on that side. And so let's pop that in there. All right. Nice shiny joints there. So same with this one. Now if you see the base of these, there's a definite point on the base. You see that's pointing over this way. So that points up on the board. So let's pop that in to begin with. Let's do the one where I get good access, which is from this side. Make sure that both sides are touching the pads though. And let's wet up this one. Nice shiny blob of solder on there. This is a ashy, they're, they're good. So this is an ashy one, this one. This one isn't an ashy one. So in the video where I was talking about these parts, I probably could have specified a better part. Um, I just picked the first one that there was. So maybe if I did this again, I'd make sure I got the ashy ones because I think I've heard their name before as a reasonable reputation for good capacitors, but I don't know. Right, so let's blob this one in. I'll come over from this side. Get the solder in and just warm up the pad. Not for too long. And once I'm sure that that's dried, let's just check whether it moves and it doesn't. So that's just my finger. Yeah, so that's on there as well. And it's the right way around. So now just to check this, so I'm going to just um, pop away and check what the orientation of this is. Uh, okay, so I can't work it out. Okay, so I can't work it out from the circuitry, but on the video here, there's the footprint of that and the bar is at the bottom. All right, so uh, the non-bar points to the top of the board. Right, so well, let's do that. So the bar is at the bottom. It's a pity that's sort of gone uh, off the board, but this isn't Will's fault because um, he got JLC PCB to make this for him. So. Um, not that it's their fault particularly as well, it's just not shown up um, in the silk screen for some reason. So I'm putting a decent blob on that. Let's stick this on, it's going to get very smoky now because I put way too much flux on that, but you can never have enough flux, as Mr. Rossman would say or used to say. And Let's do that last bit of the board there then. So if when I come to uh, power up this board, it doesn't work, you know what the issue is. Okay, so that's got that on there lovely so now I'll do the through hole components I'm going to start with all the pin stuff and I think let's just put another another bit on there it needs to go this side Then just check that the ground is at the bottom there. So pop that in. I'll 
blast those with some flux again. And that should all wet up nicely with the soldering iron. I wore out my original tip, so this is a different tip. I wore out my original tip, so this is a different tip I'm using uh, on this iron. And it looks a bit fat and big for this, but we'll see how it goes. It's worked okay for the others. And it's more of like a chisel, a chisel tip this. need to be holding this better. Okay, so I've got a bit of bridging in some of those but it should come off okay. what the flux helps. A little bit of clean up going to be needed on that with the toothbrush and the IPA but that's fine. That's goes got those in. Oh they look neat don't they? There's something about using different colours that make it look a bit more professional somehow. Let's do this bit which needs to go there so let's just check the there's the ground over that side that's got to go in there and hopefully this will now all balance a little bit better not wonderfully but in with the flux again doesn't seem to be pushing in as well that's better and the nice thing is if you've got a decent amount of flux, if you've got a bit on the soldering tip, it will just um, wick off without having to add more solder because you don't need the flux core in the solder as much if you're doing it that way. So sometimes it's nice to do that. Oh, they've gone in absolutely lovely. Now I should be able to pull that off. And we've got lovely ground and positive and then the data pins. And then I can pop this back on the Arduino. that will be able to go in there make sure that I get the solder joints because there's more holes and same on this bit flux him up Make sure that the pins are sticking out the right way. <clears throat> Just do one of the end ones. Just to stop them moving around. And now go through it. Thank you. 
and I'm just going to get some of the try and get some of the flux off there. It's a bit of a cheat. We'll get some of that off there to uh, make this a little bit easier to solder. Make sure I've got it the right way round, which is that way. And I might need to put something underneath that to make sure that it's it's flat. Yeah, <laughs> look how it comes. Just a little bit. Oh, actually, if I take the Arduino out, I think that was what was. Oh, yeah. So that's holding the pins up now. Let's do the first one. Just make sure it's on the board. I'm just going to push this now from the underside. I have to do it quite quickly because the screw will heat up and burn me otherwise. But yeah, so that just went in only a little bit. Now I should be able to do that one again and go back and do the first one. Oh, look, there's a lot of gook coming off that. Probably should have put gloves on for this, but there we go. Who know what? Who knows what I was cleaning with this toothbrush earlier? I think this might be one that I actually uh, swill underneath the tap. got this horrible feeling that I was using that brush to clean some resin prints oh well and let's do the top as well okay well I'm pleased with that board it's going to take a little while for the uh, IPA to boil off but uh, what a nice looking board so uh, that's really nice Will um, Thank you for designing that for us. Thank you for sharing the Gerber. And uh, hopefully you'll see the finished results of this working in an iMac in another video. You might even have already seen it, in which case it's this video here that uh, we test this and get it working. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to my channel to see more stuff. What Spider Math does. Bye.